Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Jana Rudler. I'm the Southern Tier Field Consultant for the Preservation League of New York State. And today we're going to learn a little bit about the Preservation League's Technical Assistance Grants. This is one of two grant programs that we run every year. And uh, we're going to learn some of the finer points of applying for a TAG grant, uh, what kind of projects we cover, and uh, some notes on eligibility. So you might recall that a couple weeks ago we learned about a certain uh, three project types that we fund through our technical assistance grants. Today we're going to learn about three other project types. So uh, as, as you come in, I want you to be aware of a few things. First of all, all of my participants here are muted and your cameras are off. So you don't have to worry. You can sit back and watch the webinar in privacy. Uh, if you do have questions, and I hope you do, uh, please type your questions into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and I will get to them as soon as I see them or in a pause in the program. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. <laughs> I would get started if my slides would... Mm, okay, I'm having a little technical difficulties here. There we go. So before we go too much further, I want to thank our funders, our hosts, and our co-sponsors. Uh, techni technical Assistance Grants programs are uh, made possible through a partnership with the Preservation League of New York State and the New York State Council on the Arts. This year we have additional funds from the Robert David Lyon Gardner Foundation for projects occurring on Long Island. And uh, we also get funding from the Hudson River Valley National Heritage Area to help fund our technical assistance grants. We've get, had some help this month from Preservation Long Island and Long Island Historical Societies to help spread the word about this presentation. And we also receive funding from the Corning Incorporated Foundation and the Community Foundation of Elmira Corning and the Finger Lakes for my work in the southern tier of New York State. So a little bit about the Preservation League. Uh, the Preservation League of New York State has been around since 1974. It was founded by a grassroots group of people who decided that we needed a unified voice for preservation in Albany. So ever since, uh, we have championed um, the essential role that preservation plays in community revitalization, sustainable economic growth, and the protection of our historic buildings and landscapes. We have programs uh, that we participate in across the state to help make sure that preservation always has a seat at the table when we're talking about economic development and community revitalization. Our headquarters is in Albany in an 1840s greenery, and you can see the picture on the screen of our building. Um, but our coverage is statewide. We cover all 62 counties of the state. So, some of our focus areas include uh, preservation colleagues. We work closely with your local preservation groups to help bring technical assistance to your area uh, to help shape um, policy, and you'll see that later. Um, but we like to hear from our colleagues uh, in parts of the state. So from Preservation Buffalo, Niagara, to Preservation Long Island, Historic Ithaca, and everywhere in between, uh, we care about what you care about locally when it comes to preservation and we try to bring enhanced programming to your areas by working with those colleagues. Our de technical services and outreach include webinars like this one that you're viewing today. Uh, we also have a current series of webinars about historic tax credits for historic homeowners and commercial properties. Um, when we're able to travel and meet in person, uh, we also bring workshops and uh, informational sessions to you all across the state about things like uh, historic window uh, upkeep and maintenance and repair and uh, the way that historic preservation works uh, for economic development in your area. Our Save, Seven to Save program is the way that we shed additional light on endangered properties all across the state. Uh, this is a two-year program. Uh, this year we're focusing on um, opera houses among other kinds of uh, properties, uh, the Erie Canal system, and it, this brings additional technical services to needy properties and helps increase um, local and statewide visibility of properties in need of saving. 
Uh, the Preservation League also brings you grants and loans. So today we're talking about technical assistance grants. We have our Preserve New York grants in the springtime and uh, our Endangered Properties Intervention Program uh, emergency assistance loans. We also affect pub public po policy uh, at the state and national level to make sure that um, laws are passed to protect our properties and to uh, empower communities to protect their historic resources. And finally, our Excellence in Preservation Awards um, brings recognition to individuals, organizations, and uh, initiatives that stand out as uh, particularly deserving of, of recognition. So as I mentioned before, the Preservation League offers two grant programs a year, our Technical Assistance Grants Program in the fall and our Preserve New York program in the spring. Last year, uh, we awarded just over $41,000 in technical assistance grants all across the state. And you can see the little circles on the map showing where these programs, uh, where these grants were awarded from Long Island to Buffalo and everywhere in between. You can also see the project types that we awarded. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about project types in a moment, but you can see a breakdown of last year's TAG grants and the kinds of projects that we funded. Everything from building condition surveys to engineering structural analyses, feasibility and reuse studies, uh, specialized conservation studies, we'll talk a lot about those today. Uh, building code analysis was one of the projects that we awarded and that um, it's not a, a very common uh, request, but it's a useful one, uh, especially if you're trying to uh, adaptively reuse your building and handicap accessibility study. And those um, are a fairly common request as well. And we'll talk a little about those today. So eligibility for technical assistance grants is limited to nonprofits and municipalities uh, who own their own building or have a long-term lease with a nonprofit or municipality on that building. Uh, the building needs to have an arts or a cultural use. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, this is a partnership with the New York State Council on the Arts, and so we're focused uh, through this program on preserving buildings that have a community uh, benefit through the arts and uh, cultural uses. Our awards for technical assistance grants top out at about $4,000. There is a required 20% cash match, so please keep in mind that in-kind gifts and uh, staff time and volunteer time do not count toward this cash match. It has to be um, cash. So we fund uh, various project types through our technical assistance grants. Building condition surveys look at specific issues uh, facing your building that need to have additional um, attention. If you need guidance in taking care of your building and you're not quite sure where to start, a building condition survey can help you prioritize the building's needs, uh, maintenance issues and repairs that need to be done, and also can help provide a cost estimate for those so that when it comes time to fundraise, you'll know what you're asking for and how to put it into words for your funders. Engineering and structural analysis looks specifically at the structure of the building, what holds it up, um, and uh, oftentimes these are underlying issues that aren't immediately obvious when you look at a building. So you have an engineer come in and take a look at your building if one side is sagging or if you're not sure if the building can withstand the kind of use that you're uh, envisioning for it, then an engineering structural analysis might be for you. Uh, feasibility reuse studies are, they're particularly important if you're looking to adaptively reuse a building. Uh, I provided some really compelling examples last time in our presentation about feasibility and reuse studies. And, you know, if you're interested in seeing some of those examples, um, that webinar, as well as this one uh, later, will be available on our website at preservenys.org. Uh, you can see our archived um, webinars there. Today, we'll be talking about specialized conservation studies, handicap accessibility studies, and mechanical, electrical, and plumbing analyses. Now, I'm not, not going to talk about that last one too much. I don't have uh, any compelling examples of those right away. Um, but, but we can talk about the importance of having that kind of analysis done for your building. So when you're thinking about applying for a technical assistance grant, 
think about the programmatic uses of your building, the needs of the community with regard to use of your building. And, um, you know, when we're dealing with historic properties, especially, you know, our goal is to make sure you can reuse your building, put it to its highest and best use while preserving the historic fabric of the building. So for example, when you're thinking about uh, putting in a new HVAC system or trying to control moisture in your building um, or increasing the accessibility of your building to everyone, then you want to be able to do this without uh, destroying the historic integrity of the building. Sometimes that's easier said than done. Uh, you may need to run ductwork. You may, may need to update the electrical system in an old building. You may need to add an elevator or a handicap accessibility ramp. And you're not sure really how to do that uh, without destroying the look of the building. So that's what these studies are meant for. Um, these are planning studies uh, that are done ahead of any brick and mortar, any capital projects, uh, any construction that you might want to do. The documents that result from these studies can help you write better grants uh, for capital projects. They can help you. Um, they can help you communicate better with your uh, community and with your funders with regard to the needs of your organization regarding the building. So when you have to ask uh, for money for your building, you'll be able to um, point to a professional study that was done that prioritizes the needs of the building and really helps you raise money more effectively for that cause. So when you're thinking about uh, capital projects in your historic building, first of all, within your organization, you wanna make sure uh, that you can articulate how this project fits with your organization's mission. Usually that's a fairly simple thing to do. Think about what you do for your community, the kind of programs you run, the mission of your organization and how your historic building helps you do that. Um, some historic buildings, have, you know, they're a challenge to work with. You have to adapt those spaces uh, for public programs. Uh, nowadays, we have to adapt our spaces for virtual programs, perhaps. Um, all of these things need to come into consideration when you're thinking about mission and your historic building and how to marry those two in a way that people will understand. Also, look within your organization for support for this project. Make sure your board of directors is all on board for the project. Make sure they understand that fundraising will absolutely be part of the project, that grants will never cover 100% of what you need to have done. Uh, and starting with the technical assistance grant, of course, that 20% cash match, you need to make sure you have that in your coffers or you can make sure that you can raise it in time uh, to accept your grant. And finally, you want to hire qualified building professionals. One thing that a technical assistance grant can do for you is it can help you produce a study um, done by uh, a professional consultant who can open doors for you uh, when it comes to hiring qualified building professionals. Um, you may not know who can do construction on your building effectively, uh, but once you get a consultant in to start doing the planning study, that person can help you connect with the proper people to do the work on your building later. So a few other things to think about with your capital project. Uh, there are some steps involved and you want to be involved um, in all, the, all of these steps. Work closely with your consultant. Identify a consultant early on and start talking to them about your ultimate goal for your building. Um, their planning project might just be a small part of the overall capital project but it's going to provide the starting point and quite a bit of guidance along the way. So first of all, take a step back from your building and look at its overall condition. You want to make sure that you're prioritizing the work that needs to be done so that if the building has some very pressing needs first, such as a leaky roof uh, or a failing foundation, that you're um, addressing those things first. Uh, before you move on to the finer points of reuse of your building. Um, undergo a preservation planning study with the help of a TAG grant. So uh, this can help you prioritize the things that need to be done to your building. Um, it can also help you with cost estimates. Um, get some bids from contractors. If you're not sure what contractors to talk to, ask your consultant. They can certainly help with that. Now, I've mentioned consultants a few times. 
The Preservation League does uh, maintain a list of qualified consultants that have successfully completed grant uh, funded projects in the past. So we can make that uh, list um, available to you. So you can reach out to them and start talking to them early about your project. Uh, make sure that you're uh, keeping tabs on the project throughout, um, th throughout completion. Uh, you wanna make sure, especially that your communication with your consultant and with your contractors is constant. So we're going to look at a couple of handicap accessibility studies that were done recently with the help of a technical assistance grant from the Preservation League. Uh, first, we're going to look at the Jefferson Historical Society and their handicap accessibility study of Judd Hall. Now, Judd Hall was a Masonic Hall in Jefferson, which is in Schoharie County. And this was built between 1865 and 1866. Uh, it was a uh, Masonic Hall for um, quite a few years. Um, it wasn't always owned by the Masons, but they always had access to the second floor in order to uh, carry out their activities. Um, in 2017, the Jefferson Historical Society purchased this building and their plans for the building were to install a history museum on the second floor and have programming and meeting space on the ground floor. Now, as with a lot of historic buildings, there were some accessibility issues. You'll see on the side of the building, um, a, a fire escape type of stairway leading to the second floor. Um, inside the building, there was a fairly narrow stairway leading to the second floor, but not a lot of ways to get um, anybody with mobility issues up to that second floor to see the history exhibits. So they needed a professional consultant to come in and help them devise a way to get people into that building more effectively for more effective community service. So uh, they were awarded a uh, technical assistance grant of $3,000 in 2017 to undergo this study. And um, they were nice enough uh, to uh, give me an update on how their project is going ever since. So they hired uh, Lacey Thaler Riley Wilson of Albany to conduct this study of the Masonic Hall. And he advised them on ways to improve uh, not just accessibility to the building, but once people are inside. So um, he advised ways to improve the restrooms, the entryway, and devised a plan for an elevator. So um, this study outlined a plan to make that building ADA compliant while still maintaining its historic integrity and appearance. And that, of course, is the goal. Um, following their TAG award, the Historical Society, mostly with volunteer effort, uh, took on the project of rehabilitating the interior of this building. And I think we have some pictures. Yes, we do. So you'll see on the lower left, uh, some volunteers painting inside the building. They did more than paint. Um, they replaced the roof. Uh, they rehabilitated the foundation. They installed insulation. Um, the building inspector wanted them to have an engineer's design for that exterior stairway that needed to be replaced. So um, they did that. Uh, that stairway is actually being uh, fabricated locally by a metal worker and uh, construction has begun. You can see on the right hand side of the slide uh, some footers that are going in for that exterior stairway. Um, the ADA modifications have been completed except for that final ramp into the building. Um, so as of today uh, the museum space is still under construction and they're waiting for the final installation of the museum infrastructure on the second floor and that elevator. And um, they did say that there's been a bit of a delay, but it's not for lack of funding. It's actually just because the contractors are extremely busy. So this project is moving forward. Um, you can see how proud the building looks. I mean, I suppose you could say, let's go back a slide and look when they first applied for their grant in 2017. Of course, winter time makes everything look a little worse, but um, the building was looking a little needy there. and then just, uh, just a year later, you can see how um, at a dedication ceremony, they were able to celebrate the opening of that building. So even though the second floor uh, is not accessible quite yet, it's on its way and they have been using the ground floor for programs. Um, I wanted to mention too that uh, the Jefferson Historical Society received a Preserve New York grant also to um, 
to designate a historic district within their community. And this Masonic Hall sits right back in the middle of that. So that was impetus also to improve the look of the building and to make sure that it reflected their pride in their historic district. Um, Jesse Ravage took, uh, was the one who did that survey uh, to designate the historic district. So you can see her in the picture at the bottom of the slide uh, giving a public presentation about the history of Jefferson. And that is um, in, in the best cases and almost always uh, part of a historic survey that takes place um, to designate a historic district in a community includes a certain amount of pro public programming so that the community understands what a historic district means and how it involves them and how, um, you know, how it can help them learn about the history of their town. All right, so I wanted to mention, uh, once again, if you do have any questions, please type them into the Q&A box at the bottom. Um, I may be talking incessantly, but I'll keep an, one eye on that Q&A box just in case there are any questions. So there's one example of a, uh, a successful handicap accessibility study that is leading to big changes for that organization. And uh, so now we'll move on. We'll look at the Genesee Orleans Regional Arts Council and their handicap accessibility study uh, for their building. So uh, the Genesee Orleans uh, Arts Council, they're also known as Go Art. Uh, I love that name. Um, they have occupied Seymour Place uh, in Batavia since 2002. Now, Seymour Place um, was a men's social club previously from 1886 all the way till 2000. Um, this building was constructed in, constructed in 1831, so it's very early brick building. Um, it was originally the Bank of Genesee. Um, GoArt uh, obtained the building and uh, has been using the building for exhibits, meetings, workshops, performances, and lectures. Um, but they needed a little bit of help and uh, making the building more accessible for everyone. So they were awarded a tag grant to do that. Let me see if I have another slide, but I don't. Oops, spoiler. So anyway, um, so GoArt is, a, is an extremely dynamic organization. They have made uh, very good use of the space in this building. We all know how hard it can be to adaptively reuse a historic building, especially when you're inviting in crowds of people, um, needing to have dry and secure storage for your collections. Um, but they have moved forward uh, year after year in improving this building and using the spaces creatively. More recently, uh, they've had to adapt some of their spaces for digital programming. So as we all know, um, organizations like GoArt have had to close their doors for a while during this COVID crisis and focus on how to carry out their mission in a virtual way. So, so they've taken a dance studio that they had and they've turned that into a video room where they have a green screen and uh, they can produce um, educational videos there and do some virtual dance classes. So that's just one example of the way they've been able to pivot um, and uh, you know, carry on their mission in spite of the, uh, the restrictions placed on them by COVID. Now they have received a number of grants to help improve their building. Um, they received an environmental, environmental Protection Fund grant uh, that's administered through the Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation um, to do a number of repairs on this building. Hold on one second, they'll let my dog in. I apologize. This is one of the many, <laughs> speaking of COVID challenges, working from home. So um, anyway, GoArt has made amazing use of their spaces. They have um, received some pretty significant grants in order to do work on this building to make sure the spaces can be adaptively reused. Um, besides the EPF grant that they received for some pretty extensive repairs, uh, they received a grant from the Rotary Club in Batavia. Uh, to renovate um, a meeting room in their facility uh, to allow them to have cooking classes. So they've had some multicultural cooking classes, uh, thanks to the Rotary Club, um, making it possible for them to buy uh, commercial stoves. And um, they've also gotten grants from the Western New York Foundation 
and the Community Foundation of Greater Buffalo for additional improvements um, in line with their historic structure report that they got a few years ago. So they've had, and, and the historic structure report is something that the Preservation League also funds through our Preserve New York grant program. This particular one for GoArt was not funded by Preserve New York, but uh, they found other funds and had a historic structure report done that helped show them the way forward uh, for using their building uh, for community programs. Now in uh, 2018, um, a technical assistance grant from the Preservation League enabled them to complete a building condition survey. So about 10 years after they had their historic structure report, they still had some um, repair and maintenance issues with their building that needed to be looked at more closely. So um, they received a TAG grant from us to do that in 2018. Um, this identified some critical repairs that needed to be done that they took care of, but it also showed them that they needed a handicap accessibility study. So this goes to show how um, even a small TAG grant just for a building condition survey can uncover other needs of your building and lead to um, later grants to help you meet those needs. So um, thanks to uh, this series of TAG grants, they were able to um, hire smart design architecture of Batavia to come in and do their handicap accessibility study. Um, and creating that accessibility plan uh, for the building will ensure that GoArt can continue to offer inclusive community programming in the future. So, um, uh, you know, I, I want to thank Gregory Halleck for uh, getting a hold of me with this um, update and to uh, let us know of some of the exciting changes uh, happening at GoArt. So let's move on and look at some more examples. So uh, one last example that I have for you of a uh, handicap accessibility study was at the Gawanda's, um, at Gawanda's Historic Hollywood Theater. This is in Cattaraugus County. Um, this little theater um, was, uh, has actually been the recipient of a number of preserve, uh, preservation grants over the years. And you can see in the slide, the Hollywood Theater on the left, and then it's connected to the Gowanda Cooperative Savings and Loan Association next door. Now that building was recently um, acquired by um, the Historic Hollywood Theater, and its intended use is at, as a support facility. So they plan to have a cafe in uh, the Savings and Loan building, as well as a solo artist um, performance space. Um, but they really needed to make sure that that building was going to be accessible for everyone. So uh, $4,000 from the Technical Assistance Grant Program has allowed them to do that. Um, so they hired Foyt Albert Associates of Buffalo to conduct this study and uh, to make sure that the building would be ADA compliant. A little bit of history um, on Gowanda's Historic Hollywood Theater. Um, back in 2012, they received a technical assistance grant from the League um, to uh, support the study of their original seating. Now, the original seating in the building is, uh, it, it, it's a character defining uh, element of the building. They wanted to be able to use that existing seating, but they wanted to make sure that it met code and accessibility requirements. So uh, in 2012, they got that grant uh, to study that seating and it has since been rehabilitated. Uh, you can see in this slide, um, the area where the seating was to go and then the rehabilitated seating there in the middle. Um, in 2015, they received a TAG grant from us um, toward the cost of a feasibility reuse study for the upper balcony area. Now, anybody familiar with uh, historic theaters can attest that the upper balcony is often um, condemned and off limits because it can be uh, unsafe and not up to code. So they wanted to make sure they could use that important space in their theater for programming. So. Um, through this 2015 TAG grant, um, they were able to take a look at that balcony, bring it up to code, and be able to use it eventually. So um, that study um, was the last uh, bit of research that needed to be done in order to um, reinstall uh, the fully restored and historically accurate theater seats. So you can see these projects went hand in hand uh, to making sure that they could um, reuse this theater 
in a way that, that made the very best use of the historic resources that were contained within. Now in 2017, uh, their handicap accessibility study um, focused on the savings and loan bank next door to make sure that that would be an accessible annex uh, and support facility for the theater. Um, so as of 2018, um, work was still uh, being completed on plaster work within the theater, uh, some carpeting curtains, um, fix, and the fixed seating was getting ready to be installed. Um, you might be wondering uh, how they paid for a lot of this work. And that's one of the points of this presentation today is to make sure that you can see how a TAG grant leads to a bigger grants for the capital projects that you actually um, need to get in order to get the work done. So in the example of the uh, Historic Hollywood Theater, um, their renovations on this building actually started in 1997 with a $100,000 uh, New York State Environmental Protection Fund grant to begin the initial rehabilitation phase for the building. Ten years later, they were able to get a half a million dollar uh, matching EPF grant through uh, the State Historic Preservation Office um, to continue the long and often overwhelming process of preserving the theater one historic phase at a time. So um, then afterward, as they began to complete the essential phases of preservation, uh, as often happens as you're doing work on a historic building, you see uh, issues starting to be uncovered. And that's where preservation planning grants, such as our TAG grants, came in to help guide the way um, forward for the historic Hollywood theater. Um, so, I, and I just want to thank uh, Deborah Harris uh, for chatting with me um, about these updates um, at the, the London's um, Historic Hollywood Theater. So, uh, hopefully they'll be able to open their doors soon, once again. Um, again, COVID is putting a bit of a wrench in everyone's plans uh, for public programming these days. If you get a chance to support these organizations as they, um, as they move through this time, uh, be a good time to do so. So lastly, I want to talk a little bit about a specialized conservation study that we funded through our technical assistance grant program. Now specialized conservation studies can take a number of forms, almost infinite number of forms. So some of the more notable uh, specialized conservation studies that we have funded in the past include studies of historic stencils within historic buildings. Um, we funded a study to look at the acoustics within a building uh, in Angelica, New York. Actually, they were having a hard time reusing a historic chapel because the acoustics were rather poor. And when you get a crowd of people in there, it would become um, untenable uh, for public programs. So they had a specialized conservation study done to look at the acoustics in the building um, and to have acoustic panels installed that would not detract from the historic look of the building. Um, these are just a couple of examples of the kinds of specialized conservation studies that you can have done with a TAG grant. Now, in Newark Valley, New York, uh, the Newark, Newark Valley Historical Society received a TAG grant in 2012 because they were having some moisture issues within their historic house and they needed to figure out what to do about it. So uh, a little bit of background, the Dement Billings Farmstead um, it's a timber frame home built in the first quarter of the 19th century uh, with an addition that was built on in the 1840s. Um, the temperature and humidity fluctuations within that building were somewhat severe and was causing some issues with uh, peeling paint and failing plaster. So in 2012, they received a TAG grant from the Preservation League uh, to hire consultant Carl Stearns to design a moisture monitoring procedure to address these plaster, plaster and paint failures in the building. Um, several steps had already been taken to try to address this, so they had tried uh, to remediate the problem through use of dehumidifiers, um, through placing a tile floor over the earthen floor in the cellar, and installing a furnace to try to regulate the temperature a little bit better in there in the wintertime. Um, However, um, they were still having issues, so Carl Stearns designed a program for them. He was their consultant. Um, so in 
So over a six month period, uh, the staff conducted a study of temperature and humidity variations within the building and uh, identified some ways that they could help remediate those variations. Um, eventually, they uh, replaced the roof as part of that. And as we all know, roof replacements are not cheap. They did this over a two year period to allow them to fundraise and find grants in order to do that. Um, once their roof had been replaced, they made a number of uh, changes that were recommended by their consultant. Um, and uh, as of now, uh, their moisture issues have been uh, remediated. So um, we're very happy to hear that the Nement Billings Farmstead is a, um, a, an important part of the community in the Valley and uh, a beautiful building to preserve. If you've never been there, try to make a trip out. Um, I want to thank Ed uh, Mizalowski for uh, getting a hold of me and telling me all about how they solved their moisture problems at the farmstead uh, with the help of the TAG grant. And, uh, so any questions that you have about specialized conservation studies, I can try to answer those. Um, really, uh, there, are, there are a number of ways um, that you can improve the interpretation of your historic buildings through a specialized conservation study. I mentioned um, a study of historic stencils. We have funded at least two of those in the past, and they've helped those organizations uh, to uh, tell a little more complete story about their historic buildings and the people who lived there and worked to build those buildings um, through the interpretation of their stencils. And historic paint analysis is another thing. If you're looking to return to an original look in your building and you're not sure uh, what color it was painted originally, um, a historic paint analysis can help. And you can certainly uh, apply for a tag grant to help cover the cost of that analysis. So, when you're ready to apply for a technical assistance grant, I can assure you it's one of the easiest grants you'll ever apply for. So part one of the application is available on our website, preservenys.org. You can go there and fill out the one page pre-application. And this is to help us determine whether you're eligible to apply for a TAG grant and whether your project is eligible. So hopefully through these presentations to you, uh, I can help clarify whether your projects are eligible, um, but the part one of the application can do that as well. If you do have questions, uh, you can always get a hold of me. I'll uh, post my contact information at the end, or you can email grants at preservenys.org and we can help guide you through the process. Make sure that you uh, get a hold of a consultant early in the process because an important part of your application will include um, the quote from your consultant in the scope of work. Uh, we want a detailed scope of work. Uh, we'll talk about budgets in a moment, but your consultant's going to be working on this. Uh, they're gonna do most of the work for you, to be honest. So make sure that you identify a consultant early, make sure that they're excited about your project and willing to help you apply for this grant. Um, and again, if you're not sure who to talk to as a consultant, we do have a list and we can make that available to you. In fact, uh, after today's presentation, I'll be emailing every one of you uh, with some important resources, including that consultant list so you can get started. Um, and, and, oh, I have a question from Ellen. Do we wait to hear from you before contacting a consultant? The turnaround time for our part one application is very fast. So if you wanna go ahead and fill out that part one application and uh, wait until you hear back from us before contacting a consultant, that's fine. Um, but really, you know, if it's something that uh, you've been thinking about for a while for your building, um, any kind of planning study, you might as well start reaching out to consultants the earlier the better. Uh, and again, uh, at the end of the day today, you'll have a list in front of you from the Preservation League um, of qualified consultants. You don't have to choose from our list, uh, but it is a helpful guide if you're not sure where to begin. So either way, Ellen, you know, you can wait to hear back on your part one application or you can contact a consultant um, right away. It's up to you. So thank you for your question. Um, now, once you fill out your part one application, you'll hear back from us pretty quickly uh, telling you either that you're not eligible, hopefully that won't be the case, or uh, sending you the part two of the application. Now part two is obviously a little more extensive than part one. It will require the help of your consultant to fill out 
Um, so uh, make sure that your consultant is clear on what you're applying for and uh, what the limitations of our grant are, uh, especially the, uh, the top award amount. Um, if your project is expected to cost much more than $5,000, then you may want to uh, have your consultant find ways to take parts of your project to be funded through our TAG program. So, um, but ideally any kind of uh, technical assistant grant funded consultant project should only take a day or so of your consultant's time. So these projects pop out around $5,000 ideally. Now, as part of your application, you're going to want to take photos, at least five of your building and of the project area. So um, as a rule of thumb, you want to start out with an overall photo of your building. That's essential. We want to see what, what building you're talking about and then start narrowing in on your project from there. If it's um, a specialized conservation study, start narrowing in on that area of your building and tell us what exactly you want to have done there. Um, go over your application checklist carefully. Make sure that you're covering all the bases. Uh, we do provide guidelines and a handy checklist to make sure that you're getting all of the documents uh, submitted with your application that you need to submit. Uh, make sure you follow the uh, instructions. Uh, be sure and contact us if you have questions. We're always available to help answer your questions throughout this process. Um, and then finally, submit your grant application on time. This year's application deadline is October 19th, so it's coming up, but you still have time, uh, so don't worry. All right, so some tips and tricks on how to fill out your application. Um, read over the application uh, before you get started. Now, you won't have part two of the application until you've filled out part one. So you'll have to do that first. Once you receive your application, take some time to just read through it uh, before you start filling it out. Um, you know, get the help that you're gonna need, whether it's from your uh, board of directors or from your consultant. Uh, make sure that you look over the guidelines. If you're not sure where to begin with writing your summary letter about the project, um, the guidelines can help you with that. And finally, read through your application instructions carefully. Um, everything is there. Um, like I said, this is probably going to be one of the easiest <laughs> grants you've ever applied for. Uh, so don't be intimidated, but make sure you read through everything carefully before you get started. Now, budgets. So when we ask for an organizational budget, um, we want to make sure that we can see if your organization is well positioned to take on a capital project that would follow uh, your grant, uh, your TAG grant funded uh, preservation study. So um, we want to see a statement of your organization's finances. Uh, this is, uh, you know, fairly straightforward. If you're a municipality applying, we only want to see the budget for the section of your municipality that's going to be responsible for this technical assistance grant funded project. So uh, we don't want to see the budget for the entire town. We just want to see the budget for that, the section of your town that's going to be uh, responsible for that project. So again, if you have questions, get a hold of us. Um, we don't want to see any 20 page budgets, please. One, two pages is sufficient. So um, if we have another question. No, we don't. Okay. All right, moving on. Um, so uh, you want to make sure that you're, again, in your organizational budget, that you've got your income and expenses listed. That's it. Pretty straightforward. All right, now uh, your project budget. Here's where some of the confusion sometimes comes in. When we're talking about the project, we only mean the tag funded portion that um, the preservation planning study that you're having funded with that four or five thousand dollars from tag. So uh, make sure that you work closely with your consultant on this budget. This is the one um, that will show us what your consultant's going to be doing and what it's going to cost. This should be a breakdown, a line-by-line -line breakdown of your consultant's time, of the tasks that they'll be accomplishing, um, the, the amount of money that they will get paid for their work. What the project budget does not refer to is the overall capital project that you're working toward. So if you're looking to, say, install a handicap accessibility um, ramp 
for an elevator, we don't want to see the budget for installing that elevator. That's going to come later and that's not going to be part of your TAG grant. Uh, the only part that we want to see is that handicap, handicap accessibility study that you'll be undertaking with a consultant. That's the project budget that we're interested in seeing. All right, and again, make sure you take good photos of your project area, starting with an overall view of the building for context and then working your way into the um, area of concern. We're looking for five images. Um, not a whole lot more and certainly no fewer than five. So um, just remember that uh, the review panel that will be looking at your grant application has probably never been to your site, as awesome as it may be. Uh, we can't, uh, you know, possibly get around to every site in the state. So make sure that you're familiarizing us with your organization and your building uh, through your photographs. And again, we're always available to help answer your questions. You can call the Preservation League in Albany and you can email grants at preservenys.org with any questions you have. Double check the checklist that we send you. Um, we're not going to throw out your application if it's incomplete, but it certainly will make our review of it a lot more difficult and you'll probably lose points somewhere in the process. So make sure that your application is complete. When we ask for a list of board of directors, make sure you provide that list. Uh, make sure you're providing your organization budget and your project budget. Um, and make sure that you're including photographs. Um, we receive applications every year with no photos and it's disheartening because we really want to give you this money. So make sure you take good photos. So you may be wondering how we, uh, how we review your uh, grant application. So we convene a panel of preservation experts from all around the state to look at these applications. Each application is evaluated entirely on its own merits. We do not compare one project with another and say one project is better than another. We don't do that. So we look at your project and we evaluate it using three criteria. So we look at the historic uh, preservation excellence of your project and the quality. So, um, you know, looking at your building, looking at your organization and its mission, uh, we look at what you're planning to do uh, through your TAG funded project and see how well it fits with both. So we wanna make sure that you are indeed putting your building to its highest and best use and uh, that you're going about it in a way that includes preservation planning studies uh, to help show you the way forward. So applying for a TAG grant is an important first step in this, but we want to make sure that uh, your project is a good match for your organization and for your mission. Um, we'll be looking at uh, your organization's fiscal and managerial competence. So we want to see how well you've handled uh, preservation projects for your building in the past. We want to make sure that your organizational budget makes sense uh, so that we can see that you're being well governed and in a good position uh, to carry this project forward even after your TAG grant. And finally, and uh, uh, we're looking at your service to the public. So again, your building needs to have an arts or a cultural purpose. And that always includes some sort of community benefit. So, um, how often is your building open to the public? Are you inviting everyone in? Are you trying to be inclusive? Um, you know, this is why we don't fund private clubs and uh, private individuals. We want to make sure that there is truly a community benefit uh, associated with your building and that uh, your tag funded project is going to help uh, improve uh, your public offerings. So, uh, you know, don't hesitate to talk about your programming in your application. We want to know what you're doing with your building, who's inside, and, and what kind of programs you're offering. So, we've reached the end of the presentation. Uh, I hope you've learned a lot. I'm going to take one last uh, check for questions. All right. Uh, be sure and type your questions into the Q&A. If you think of something later, you can always email me. Um, the deadline for this year's technical assistance grants is October 19th. Uh, so be sure and get your part one filled out right away. And uh, let's see, we do have uh, another question. Let's see if I can find. Hmm. All right. Give me one moment, Dana. I'm trying to find. Um, I know you raised your hand. Um, 
there we go. Is the deadline of, oh no. <laughs> so October 19th is a deadline for the whole application. So be sure you fill out your part one today. Again, the turnaround's really fast. You get part one in, we will get right back to you uh, with your part two application, or we may have questions for you if we're not sure if you're eligible. So it's important to get part one filled out as fast as you can, <laughs> as soon as you can. It's really simple. Um, it's that part of the application is simple, but yes, the deadline is for the entire grant. Um, and so I'm not seeing, uh, I know Dana, you raised your hand, but for some reason I can't access uh, your question. So if you wouldn't mind typing it into the Q&A box instead, um, I'll answer you there because I can't quite find where to call on you. So, oh, here we go. Okay, Dana, thank you. Um, so you're wondering which category I would apply under. Your project is to have your doors and locks analyzed for what upgrades they need in order to be compliant with safety and accessibility laws. Um, oh, that's a good question. Doors and locks. That's a, I haven't heard that question before. So let's see. Um, it would not be an engineering and structural analysis. No. Um, so I'm glad you, you brought that up. Uh, I would say that that would be a specialized conservation study or an accessibility, a handicap accessibility analysis, one of those two. Um, because it does have to do with accessibility, as you pointed out, uh, that could be part of a handicap accessibility analysis is having your doors unlocked, looked at. Um, so I think I would go that route with it, a handicap accessibility analysis uh, to have your doors unlocked. Uh, analyzed for accessibility and, and security. So uh, thank you for your question. That's a really good question. First time I've seen anybody refer to their, their doors and locks for that. So um, great. All right. So again, uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you enjoyed this presentation, uh, I hope you'll consider supporting the league and keeping in contact with us. We're all over the internet at preservenys.org. We're also on Facebook. Uh, we do Facebook live presentations from time to time from interesting historic places all around the state. So please tune in there and uh, follow us on Instagram if you like uh, beautiful pictures of historic buildings. And uh, if you have questions, feel free to send us an email. Again, I'm Jana Rudler. I'm always happy to answer your questions as well. Um, you can contact me at J-R-U-D-L-E-R at preservenys.org. Um, you can also make a donation on our website. Again, if you enjoyed this presentation, I do hope that you'll consider sending a gift. Uh, like a lot of other organizations these days, we're having to do quite a bit of footwork uh, to make up for not being able to meet in person with you all. So uh, I do hope you'll support our work and, and, and thank you again for being here today. Uh, my next presentation is on October 5th. So we're getting down to the wire for your TAG grant uh, deadline. But if you'd like to learn about our partnership with the Robert David Lyon Gardner Foundation and some important projects on Long Island, I do hope you'll tune in on October 5th for that. And you can sign up on our website for that webinar. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to my follow-up email and you'll be able to view this webinar later on our website. All right. Thanks so much.